Hey, look, I'm finally making another sword video. I did say I tried to make more. I should really work out like a proper intro for videos. That'd be a good idea. Anyway, this is how I built Andro. I started by making a half stencil first so that once I'd drawn out one side, I could flip it over and that way it was completely symmetrical. Necessary safety gear for this includes a dust mask, goggles, and safety cat ears as always. I cut it out on the jigsaw and to be honest the guard sections gave me so much anxiety because they were so thin. I was really nervous that they'd break so I just went really slowly and cut out the rough shape and thankfully it didn't crack. I can sand down anything that I left a little wide later on. I used some sandpaper to smooth off any rough parts that the jigsaw left and then I thinned down the blade with a planer until I was happy with how thin it was. I found the centre line of the sword and drew it on so I could measure the fuller. And then it was onto the belt sander. I used that to sand in the bevels, but looking back, it would have been much easier to put the fuller in first and then base the bevels on that. So if you're building this or anything with a fuller, just do that first. And shaping the handle was surprisingly easy to do because my sanding belt just happened to be the perfect width. I drilled a hole on each side of the guard and in the pommel and again used some sandpaper to take off any bits that chipped. And now for hours and hours of Dremel work. Yay! I used the smallest sanding bit that I had to carve out the details in the guard and the pommel. The pommel kind of has two layers as it bevels inwards, so I tried my best to get that done with the Dremel, and then I went back in with a standing knife to shape the hole to have triangular points and to smooth out the rest. If you're building this, please be careful if you're using knives, go slowly and try not to cut off any of your fingers. Next I put in the fuller, which was a bit of a pain, but I tried to keep it even as much as I could down the length of the blade. Again, I should have done this first, but it still worked fine, you just have to take your time with it. And then even more Dremeling. I used the same sanding bit to shape the points on each side of the guard and even though in theory I could have done this much quicker on the belt sander, the pieces were so thin I felt like I had more control of the Dremel. I think this is the last bit of Dremel work at last, where I thinned out and shaped the top of the handle. Oh, no, never mind. I used a pointed diamond bit to shape the holes on the guard to make them a bit more triangular. I used some sandpaper to smooth out the fuller before adding the lettering, letters, runes, symbols, markings, engravings, uh, what are they called? Okay, you get the idea, those things. I drew them on with pencil and since the wood was pretty soft, I just etched them in with a pen. I had tried a few other tools, but nothing was working too well and sometimes the most simple option turns out to be the best. After that, I used some air drying clay to add details. The rings on the handle don't have to be perfect because they're going to be covered anyway. Once they were dry, I stuck them down with some wood glue. I wiggled the rings kind of loose so I could get some glue under them, just to ensure that they didn't move about, and then I wiped away any of the excess glue with a tissue. And now we can finally get to painting it! The paint job is really what will make or break your sword. Using flat colours tends to make it look more like a toy, but adding shading will really bring it to life and really makes all the difference to the final piece. And there is absolutely no shame in blending with your finger. It can make smoothing out colours really easy. Try to always have highlights and shadows meet on edges because they give your sword a lot more depth. The bottom of the handle is actually going to be wrapped but I still painted it black anyway. Just in case the wrap ever tears it'll still all be black. Since I had a bit of trouble shaping the point on the guard because they were so small, I painted them black so it looks like they are more pointed than they were. Once all the paint was dry I went over the lettery symbol thingies with a black biro. I also added the gold to the pommel and noticed there was a very thin line between it and the silver so I just etched that in with a big ass nail. And then it was time to wrap the handle. I glued a bunch of wood glue all over the whole thing and first wrapped it with some kind of stretchy cotton fabric to smooth out the shape. Once that was dry I covered that in glue again and I wrapped it with a black ribbon to give it a nicer finish. When the glue had dried, I used some oven cooked clay to shape the piece that covers the top of the ribbon, cooked it and then glued it into place and painted that. And any little bits of grey paint that I got on the ribbon, I just painted black. Now, onto the mount. So I sketched the rough shape that I wanted it to be and then made a half stencil for that and lined it out. I cut it out in the jigsaw and then clamped it in my workbench and smoothed down all the edges with a sander. I only really rounded off the edges on one side because that's the way the mount will be facing. Next I marked out where the holes are going to go. So for this we have two sets, the top two are so that the mount will be flat on the wall, and the other two are for pilot holes for the screws that will hold the sword where it sits. I cleaned up all those holes with some sandpaper. And then on to painting. 
I drew up my pattern onto the mount and at first I was super precise about the paint and then I realised it was completely unnecessary because the rest of it's going to be painted darker anyway. I knew I wanted the Tree of Gondor to be the pattern on the mount so I picked the entire shape of the mount based around that but you can really have it any shape that you want and it'll still look fine. And here's the bit that I forgot to film because there's always something. I went back and drilled the pilot holes in the mount and then put two screws in and wrapped them in the same black cotton fabric that I used earlier. And very lastly, I covered both the mount and the sword in a clear matte spray varnish. So that's how I built that one. Let me know what you thought of it in the comment in the meh. So that's how I built that one and because it was a commission it pretty much went straight to its new owner so I don't have it to hold and show you all pretty at the end. But I really am happy with how it turned out and it was really interesting to make a mount for a sword as well because that was the first time I've done that. Let me know what you thought of it in the comments. If there's anything that you'd like to see me build then leave it in the comments below and I might make it sometime. If you want more sword videos you can subscribe and there's a like button if you liked it. And you're on YouTube, you know how this works. And there's all those gadgets and bits and stuff and technology, because what a time to be alive. I upload on the 12th of every month. It's not always going to be a sword video, but it's going to be a sword video as often as I can. And I'll try and make the other ones interesting too. If you want, you can follow me on all my social media stuff as well. That's it there. And it's all linked below. So be sweet, be strange, be kind, don't be an asshat. And I will see you in the next video. So, sláinte!